the finest hand-picked well-tied spring meets the chewiest brown sugar bobo on the block. Bursting with L-carnitine, flavor, and health. Immortals delight the drink of diviners. Newsflash. The IPC will soon be dispatching representatives to multiple worlds. The effort is part of a raft of new measures to encourage trade and strengthen friendship throughout the cosmos. The Genius Society's newest masterpiece, Simulated Universe World 8, is about to go live. Madame Herta has revealed that the project is about to enter the launch phase. For further details, don't forget to tune in to our program's follow-up reporting. Renowned songstress Robin has received an invitation to perform at Penacone's Charmony Festival. Hello? Hello? In recent days, the Sienjo Lofu has reported an uptick in supernatural activity. With evil spirits wreaking havoc across multiple locations, the Ten Lords Commission has assured citizens that it is thoroughly investigating all incidents. This program will be bringing you the latest as the story unfolds. For more details, stay tuned for the upcoming Haunted Sienjo special program. Beautiful creature, bless you for choosing to dally here. Allow me to ask you, as a fellow entity of the universe, are you acquainted with the goddess Sidrilla? Another anomaly in this shining universe. Since you do not understand the beauty, I will have to show you in a way that only a knight can. The beauty is eternal! Hey! Look, we made it! What's up, guys? We're the haunted place in the Lofu. Follow and share! Or else I'm gonna... I think I just want to do what you Yo, what's up? You're finally here. Captain Hohua, should we start the ghost talk now? Darkness falls across the delve as ghost fires dance. The clock strikes twelve. Well, whether or not your world has a midnight hour, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. 
Welcome to the Inner Astral Peace Media's Haunted Sienjo Special Program. I'm your ghostly host with the most Albert. <laughs> <laughs> For today's episode, we've invited two special guests. Together, we'll be introducing you to the Sienjo's weirdest and most wonderful. Hi, everyone. I'm the Galactic Baseballer. <laughs> Speaking of weird and wonderful. <laughs> hey, guys. Grey Knife in here. It's an honor to be a guest on the 1.5 special program. Mm. Oh, uh, I mean, Albert's Haunted CN Joe special program. <laughs> huh? Albert, did you unlock a new skin? <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Naturally, an anchor of my standing needs to have the best wardrobe department in town. Now, as our audience will be well aware, the Sienjo is constantly roaming the universe. And the universe is filled with the unknown. It should come as no surprise then that the La Fu has had its fair share of strange encounters. And speaking of strange, the trailer we just witnessed gave us a sneak peek into a place of mystery, evil, and ghost fire. Fixtral Garden. Mm, I thought Fixtral Garden was just some old abandoned place on the La Fu. Why is it suddenly getting so much attention? Allow me to explain. A while back, the Artisanship Commission's creation furnace was shattered, and the helio trapped inside were able to escape. Know where they went to hide? Mm, yep. Fixtral Garden. I see. Wait, what's a helio People say that the helio are the result of accumulated grievances. They can possess people, deceive the senses, affect the soul, and usurp the flesh. Those possessed exhibit bizarre behavior and restless thoughts. It's a truly frightening spectacle. But the creation furnace wasn't exactly fragile. How could it just break? Rumor has it, the Artisanship Commission's surveillance recorded a gray-haired figure in dark clothing. Huh. Gray hair? Dark clothing? Did they have a baseball bat? Hey, don't pin this on me. The destruction of the creation furnace was a direct result of the Stellaron disaster. Right, Oliver? Just tell us more about Fixtral Garden. <clears throat> Fixtral Garden has always been overflowing with yin energy, and the garden itself is littered with suppression towers, stone monoliths, and ancient trees. It's creepy enough in the day. When the sun goes down, things get a whole lot creepier. The garden is layered and deceptive, and it's easy to lose your bearings. Since the Helio Bai moved in, it's probably the most dangerous place on the La Fu. Helio Bai are experts when it comes to possession, and even the most experienced Wraith Wardens and Arumaton Spectral Envoys can become their victims. When you can't tell your friend from your enemy, things tend to go south fast. If all that wasn't enough, they say that Mara-stricken members of the Ten Lords Commission also wander the garden. A word of advice? Keep your wits about you. <laughs> Sounds like great streaming material to me. I bet I could become the CN Joe's number one streamer in no time. <laughs> Funny you should mention. To most people, Fixtral Garden was always a strange and desolate place that rarely got much attention. But now that stories are beginning to circulate, the situation has changed. Recently, the Sienjo's online forums have been filling up with posts describing supernatural phenomena in Fixtral Garden. Everything from self-playing violins to the wailing cries of vengeful ghosts. Unsurprisingly, Sienjo fans of the supernatural are loving every second. Uh, in my experience, forums aren't exactly the most reliable news sources. Ugh, who cares if some of it's false? This is a hype train I can't afford to miss! Trailblazer, what do you think? Wanna start a ghost hunting squad with me? <sighs> Fire breathing, quiet band performances, headstands, balancing acts, spear deflection, sword juggling, and boulder smashing. Weren't enough, huh? 
Now you're an expert in ghost hunting? Uh, who said I was an expert? I just have a lot of transferable skills, that's all. <laughs> well, you better hope so. Speaking of which, in the brand new version 1.5 Trailblaze Continuance, a Foxian tale of the hunted, the ghost hunting squad will be responsible for chasing down Heliobi, purging evil, resolving crises, and protecting the Sienjo. A Foxian Tale of the Haunted is divided into five chapters and starts off with the ghost hunting squad facing an unusual danger and Sojourner's ghastly reverie. Once this chapter is complete, the story continues to unfold with twins, percipient, sword essence, and Foxian dream. Five chapters, huh? We'll be topping Sienjo internet searches in no time! See? I knew you were on the same wavelength. In addition to Trailblaze Continuance, and together with Miss Gwen Knifen, Trailblazers will also be facing fixtural garden dangers in both Lawfu Urban Legends and Ghost Hunting Squad missions. <laughs> cool! <laughs> oh, and I almost forgot to mention, during the Ghost Hunting Squad's fictional exploration, Trailblazers can jointly manage Gwen Knife and Socials. Posting threads is a great way to create discussion among Zienjo netizens and fans of the supernatural. Oh, I can't wait! We're gonna get the whole Zienjo talking! Seriously, this is once-in-a-lifetime material! We gotta plug it for everything it's got! I'm talking daily updates, community engagements, all that good stuff! Once you get enough momentum, the fan base grows itself! <laughs> Social media stardom is finally on the horizon! <coughs> oh, you know, Miss Gwen Iphen, there's always room for creative talents at the IBM, and I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but I've introduced a lot of big names to the company. <laughs> The Albert stamp of approval goes a long way. Aw, thanks, Albert. I'm afraid I'm too invested in the CN Joe for now, though. Good to know there's an offer on the table. Well, it's cool. I get it. <laughs> but uh, here's my card if you ever want a collab. Just give me a shout. Deal. Now, where were we? Oh, socials. Increasing your account's popularity level allows you to unlock more stories and events. Your ghost hunting skills will only improve as you unlock more suppression towers and take on new challenges. Not to mention, by completing limited time missions, Trailblazers can obtain the event light cone, hey, over here. What do you think, Guilings? Let's give it up for Guilings' generosity, woo! <sighs> Still, I hope the ghost hunting squad is up to the job. Sounds like we'll have a lot on our plate. Don't worry. You might just be getting a helping hand from one of the Sienjo's most formidable forces, the Ten Lords Commission. They're the judges of the Mara Struck, the arbiters of life and death. When it comes to warding off evil and expelling the supernatural, nobody does it like the Ten Lords. But despite their reputation, they're shrouded in a certain amount of mystery. Whoa! The Ten Lords are getting involved? Just when I thought our stream couldn't get any crazier! Well, before you get too excited, I'd spend some time getting to know your assignee. The Ten Lords have dispatched a trainee judge to assist the ghost hunting squad in investigating the fixtural garden situation. Trainee, huh? Uh, as long as they're confident in their abilities. Yeah, about that. What was a wind type character following the path of abundance and a trainee judge of the Ten Lords Commission? Huh? Wait, is her tail on fire? Those are the spookiest looking flames I've ever seen! Yeah, does being on fire help with ghost hunting? Uh, what are you two whispering about? Uh, nothing! Just beginning to doubt her credentials? How did this little girl become a judge in the first place? Good question. <laughs> Wahua is essentially a magnet for evil, something that comes in super handy for the Ten Lords Commission. <laughs> they couldn't believe their luck. Sounds qualified. Of course. Talent comes in all shapes and sizes. The key is to bring the best out of everyone. Still, to her, Wahua's unique skill set isn't exactly a blessing. 
People say she has the worst luck on the CN show. Always running into ghosts, tripping over thin air, you know the deal. Well, if I spent my life running into ghosts, I'd probably fall over a lot too. I remember one of my Gwailings had the same problem. Lucky for her, one of my sponsors sells this amazing remedy that can- And we're getting sidetracked. <laughs> anyway, I only told you half the story. Bad luck, evil attraction, call it what you like. It all started from a single unfortunate event. Oh? When Hua Hua was a little younger, her tail was possessed by a monstrous long life species. Any guesses? Yep, it was a helio bus. That very same day, the Ten Lords Commission decided to seal the monster in its hiding place and took Hua Hua under their wing. Ah, uh, I get it. So Hua Hua is kind of like a, a Ten Lords guinea pig. <laughs> I think Herda had a similar fate planned for me. That may have been part of it. However, the Ten Lords realized that Hua Hua had the ability to pacify the monster. Naturally, anyone able to wield the power of a Helio bus was seen as a potential weapon of war. But she's just a baby! How could a scared little Foxy and girl ever take on the responsibilities of the Ten Lords? Oh, Hua Hua's well aware she just scared a cat. That's why she watches so many horror Mercia to train her courage. <laughs> I guess you could call that fighting fear with fear. <laughs> I'm here all week, y'all. If that actually worked, I'd have joined the Stellaron Hunters already. Practicality aside, Hua Hua's willingness to confront her shortcomings is a true sign of professionalism. Not to mention, having spent more than a few years in the company of a Heliobus, she's had to develop her own tricks for banishing evil. Hua Hua's basic attack Banner Stormcaller can deal wind damage to a single target. Uh, kind of looks like her tail is the one making the decisions. <clears throat> when using her skill, Talisman Protection, Hua Hua bravely brandishes her banner, restoring HP to a single ally and adjacent teammates. Are you sure she's not trying to surrender? <clears throat> Hua Hua's ultimate! Tail Spiritual Domination can regenerate allies' energy and increase their attack. Well, so that's what a Heliobus looks like. No wonder it took the Ten Lords Commission to seal it away. When under the influence of her tail, Hua Hua has a few special talents. After using her skill, she receives Sacrifice Life. Sacrifice Life can grant allies a set amount of HP restoration at the beginning of their respective turns or when they use their ultimate. Nice! Not bad for a trainee, huh? This ghost hunting squad's gonna kick butt! Mm, that's not all. What was technique? Fiend impeachment of evil sends her enemies into a horror-struck state and scatters them in all directions. When attacking a horror-struck enemy, there's a chance of reducing their attack. Oh, scaring away your enemies. <laughs> nice moves, Hua Hua. Still not getting judge vibes, though. Hey, easy on the training. <laughs> of course, when you're dealing with Heliobi, the more judges, the better. That's why the Ten Lords appointed a seasoned veteran to bring up the rear. I'm talking about none other than Hanya! Hanya is a netherworld judge of the Ten Lords Commission. She's a physical type character, following the path of harmony. Ah, I remember that face. Uh, I saw her on the Return to Darkness light cone. Mm, correct the mundo. <laughs> Rumor has it, she's one of two sisters dedicated to the work of the Ten Lords. She's responsible for predicting karmic offenses and recording corresponding judgments. Or to be more precise, Hanya reads the karmic sins of criminals and uses her oracle brush to record their punishments. She's good at her job and takes it super seriously. In the Ten Lords Commission, her reputation precedes her. <gasps> Sounds like a Ten Lords celebrity! She put in the hours, that's for sure. In order to determine their sins, Hanya reads the memories of the Mara struck in the form of dreams. Cool. Sounds like our ghost hunting squad just found its guiding light. No offense, Huo Hua, but those sound like credentials. <laughs> hey, 
Enough with the hua hua bullying. But speaking of credentials, it's time to see what Hanya can do on the battlefield. During her basic attack, Hanya uses her Oracle Brush to assault the enemy, dealing physical damage to a single target. She really lives by the pen is mightier than the sword, huh? <laughs> um, I'll get my coat. In addition to dealing physical damage to a single target, Hanya's skills, Samsara Lot, can inflict them with a burdened state. Ooh, is that Hanya's way of marking enemies prior to sentencing? Pretty much. Allies inflict increased damage on enemies marked with burden. And if that wasn't enough, after an ally launches a set amount of attacks on an enemy marked with burden, they recover a skill point. When the going gets tough, Hanya's got your buff. Hanya's ultimate, Ten Lords Decree, all shall obey, can increase speed and attack for a single ally. When Hanya uses her technique during exploration, she immediately launches an attack and inflicts burden on a random enemy. When the enemy won't budge, call in the judge. All that aside, in version 1.5, the new stagnant shadow, Shape of Perdition, will appear within the Fixture Garden map on the Sienjo Lafu. Complete the challenge to obtain new physical ascension materials. Within the same map, We'll also be welcoming Cavern of Corrosion, Path of Darkness. Complete the challenge to obtain two brand new cavern relics, Prisoner in Deep Confinement, and Grand Duke Incinerated to Ashes. <laughs> Woo! Well, that just about brings us to the final sections of our Haunted Cien Joe special program. Huh? Already? Oh, this program isn't nearly haunted enough for my liking. Where are all the ghost stories? You know, beautiful foxy and spirits knocking on your door at midnight. That kind of thing. I think you're thinking of a different program. Moving swiftly on to some exciting updates. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, y'all, and don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the following commercials. <laughs> hey, you there. Sick and tired of the daily grind? Had enough of running errands? Do you long for rapturous applause and cheering voices? How about increased self-confidence and a sense of pride? And do we have an opportunity for you? The Boulder Town Martial Exhibition is now open for registration. Put yourself to the test by challenging the best. This event will once again be hosted by Scott Business Alliance. Scott Business Alliance, made for the champion. In order to bring our audience a brand new experience, this event will be adopting a simultaneous exhibition format. Use your fists to prove your worth. Enter I Am The Ultimate Fighter to register your name. Could you be Boulder Town's new fighting star? A stellar Shadow Seeker recruitment announcement. March 7th, member of the Nameless has put out a cordial invitation for anyone able to restore her photographs to the way she remembers them. The images in question were inexplicably damaged. I lost all kinds of cool pictures. Beautiful scenery, strange encounters, you name it. There's a big reward for anyone that can help me restore the images. Actions speak louder than words. Miss March's memories are in your hands. Madam Herda of the Genius Society is about to launch unlimited beta testing for the newly developed Simulated Universe World 8. Participants will have their costs covered and progress saved for future iterations. In order to participate in this offline confidential beta test, please head to the most mysterious place in the universe. Herda's office. Test participants will be rewarded with a brand new Pentagoni Land of the Dreams and Ferment Frontline Glamoth Planer Ornaments. What are you waiting for? Get testing! Good news! The Planer Fisher and Garden of Plenty events are about to begin. It's the version you know and love. Let the computer do the hard work for three minutes and get your hands on double rewards together with Argenti. One must explore the essence of beauty to appreciate the depth of chivalry. <laughs> yes, it is I, your beloved avian servant. 
Welcome to Inner Astral Peace Media's second special program, Legend of Cosmic Beauty. In today's program, we will be introducing a new friend of the universe. Yo, how's my favorite audience doing? <laughs> Great to see you. We've hardly been gone and Albert here's already had another wardrobe change. <laughs> Perhaps you didn't get the memo. But we're about to be discussing a night of impeccable elegance. <laughs> it's time to get fancy. So, without further ado, allow me to introduce a member of the Knights of Beauty, Ha Jinti! Argenti is a physical type character following the path of erudition. As a devoted admirer of Adrilla the Beauty, Argenti spends his life roaming the universe and extolling their name. Ah, so the simulated universe occurrences Curio, Robe of the Beauty, and Knights of Beauty to the rescue. They're obviously related to the knights, right? Running into the Knights of Beauty while testing the simulated universe is always a blessing. Those guys are a lifeline in a tight spot especially when I can't get enough path resonance. <laughs> Treating people with courtesy, helping others as a matter of principle, and offering sincere praise to all things in the universe. Mm. Such is the code of conduct that our genty lives by. In the simulated universe, not every helping hand is benevolent, but those provided by the knights are beyond question. May the names of our genty and the beauty be blessed for all eternity. Uh, speaking of which, Albert, what was that planar fissure and Garden of Plenty commercial all about? Well, Argenti magnanimously answered our call and agreed to appear in our commercial as a corporate ambassador. Oh, and I know they forgot our end of the bargain. <clears throat> the IPM acknowledges that Adrilla the Beauty is the most peerless beauty of them all. <sighs> Albert, what did you get yourself into now? No need to worry. Just a little two-way back scratching. Um, okay. Kind of TMI. But I still don't really understand the concept of the beauty. <laughs> Allow me to explain. Adrilla's beauty permeates everything. Take Argenti, for example. From his daily armor cleaning routine to his constant grace, all of it stems from his pursuit of the beauty. Elegance is Argenti's middle name and even manifests itself in his combat. Argenti's basic attack, Fleeting Fragrance, can deal physical damage to a single target. His skill, Justice Hereby Blooms, can deal physical damage to all enemies. Nice! Man, I wish I looked that elegant in combat. Mm -hmm. Argenti's ultimate is pretty unique, triggering different effects depending on the amount of energy consumed. Such is the manifold beauty of Adrilla. When consuming a small amount of energy, Argenti's ultimate, for in this garden supreme beauty bestows, can deal damage to all enemies. When consuming all energy, Argenti's ultimate becomes merit bestowed in my garden, which deals greater damage. It also inflicts additional damage on a random target. Huh? So you can choose how much energy to release? Mm, that's not all. Argenti's talent, Sublime Object, can allow Argenti to regenerate additional energy and obtain a stack of self-cultivation. Self-cultivation can increase Argenti's crit rate. Oh, so the more self-cultivation, the fiercer his attacks. Or uh, to, to put it another way, Argenti needs to attack as many enemies as possible. The greater the number of enemies, the faster his energy regeneration, and the stronger his combat. Exactly! Stronger combat, faster energy regeneration, more enemies to attack. Argenti giving erudition vibes. I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. Argenti's technique, manifesto of purest virtue, can daze enemies within a set range. Dazed enemies are unable to launch attacks. Attacking a dazed enemy to enter combat not only deals damage to all enemies, but also regenerates Argenti's energy. Woo! <laughs> Argenti is kinda handsome. I'm feeling a little dazed myself. <laughs> they say looks can kill. 
That's true, that our Genty fans are in for a fatal surprise in version 1.5. In Night of Universal Hallucinations, Trailblazers will encounter our Genty en route to a washtopia. Uh, wait a second, a wash a what now? I shower every day. Slow down there, Trailblazer. Have you never asked yourself how the Astral Express stays so clean and shiny? Uh, because... Pom-Pom's always cleaning up after us? <sighs> it's because the train stops at Wastopias along its journey. Wastopias specialize in cleaning interstellar craft. You know, they're all kinds of fast-acting, lemon-scented, antibacterial... We're getting off topic! All you need to know is that the encounter with Argenti is one of excitement and wonder. <laughs> and a little bird tells me He's set for a showdown with the entire crew. I don't get it. Why are we always either in a fight or on the way to one? A fight, you say? <laughs> Far too boorish a term. What you meant to say was a chivalrous display of gentlemanly fortitude. <laughs> anyway, Argenti only challenges those who he deeply respects. Ah, you mean that the illustrious galactic baseballer's reputation doth precede one? Oh, uh, sure. Anyway, with the driller's blessing, let's move straight on to the version 1.5 warp events. Ugh, finally! First off, during the first phase of version 1.5 in the character event warp, Bloom and Gloom, Trailblazers can obtain the limited five-star character Hua Hua. Yours, my favorite scaredy cat trainee judge. During the second phase of version 1.5, we'll be welcoming two character event warps in Thorns of Scented Crown. Trailblazers can obtain the limited five-star character Argenti. Ah, our knight in shining armor. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in Contract Zero, the familiar face of Silver Wolf will be joining the war. Not to mention the four-star character Hanya, who will be appearing in both the aforementioned second phase character event warps. Ah, long time no see, Silver Wolf. <laughs> uh, I, I wonder if her game accounts are doing any better. You want to ask her the next time you see her? You first. <laughs> now, it's time to take a look at version 1.5's Light Cones. In the first phase of version 1.5, the drop rate for the five-star light cone, Night of Fright, will be boosted. While in the second phase of version 1.5, the five-star light cone, an instance before gaze, will enter the light cone event warp. At the same time, the drop rate for the five-star light cone, Incessant Rain, will be boosted. All aboard! <laughs> the train is about to make the jump, and here's some other cool stuff. Starting from 1.5 within the team selection and character ascension screens, every character will have Damn brand this. new voice this lines. This is a different kind of arena. Promoted again? Is that good or bad? Ah, is that Hoho's ascension line? Ah, so cute! <laughs> uh, wait, if a character's already fully ascended, can we still hear their line? We got you covered! All audio lines get saved in the index. You can listen back at any time. Here's something else. In version 1.5, we'll also be seeing a guest book feature update. If Trailblazers are ever curious to check which friends have visited the Express, the guest book has a record and message from each visit. <laughs> Such a neat idea. Additionally, the Forgotten Hall will also be receiving updates in 1.5. First up, in Forgotten Hall Combat, Trailblazers can now choose to re-challenge. Re-challenge? It's like this. If things aren't going too smooth when challenging a certain stage, Trailblazers can choose to return to the Forgotten Hall map and restart the challenge. When re-challenging, previously used technique points are replenished. A chance to replan your maze technique strategy, perhaps. <laughs> oh, and I almost forgot to mention, stopping and restarting a challenge in the second half of a stage doesn't mean you have to redo the first half. Whew, that is a relief. And when entering the Forgotten Hall, your combat lineup for each stage is now remembered, regardless of whether you met with victory or defeat. Your previous lineup will be waiting for you on the preparation screen. <laughs> no need for manual selection. Now that's my kind of update. <laughs> Can't wait for Trailblazers to give it all a spin. The Forgotten Hall is an important system within the game. Updates will continue to be rolled out, so stay tuned for future versions. 
Well, looks like it's time for our final redemption code. See you on the other side, Trailblazers. I'm back. <laughs> Me too. Me three. <laughs> Good to see you again, Trailblazers. You're just in time to help us wrap up version 1.5 special program. Aw, uh, is it that time already? I was just getting started. Be my guest, Trailblazer. This owl is ready to flap. <clears throat> Aren't you forgetting something, Albert? I'm pretty sure you didn't mention the thing. Thing? What thing? <gasps> the thing. That thing? Winky Winky. Gift of Odyssey. <laughs> How could I forget? In version 1.5, Trailblazers can get their hands on 10 warps through the check in event. There it is. <laughs> Heck yeah. Gotta love a check in event. <laughs> and that's not the only thing to love in version 1.5. Anything in today's IPM programs tickle your fancy, guys? You had me at Ghost Hunting Squad. I am so ready for a spooky stream. <laughs> Sign me up! As for me, it was all about those unique characters. Huo Huo's tail backstory, Hanya's Ten Lords expertise, and Argenti's mysterious search for the beauty. <laughs> Can't wait to see them in person. Couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> and with that, Trailblazers, I bid you a peaceful onward journey. <laughs> Thank you for supporting the IBM. See you in the next one! <laughs> see ya! <laughs> Trailblaze you later! <laughs>